in Valheim, but also the only place you can grow the materials you need to get end game items in Valheim. Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a base in the plains biome that will allow you to not be able to be attacked and also be able to grow all the things that you'll need for your end game items. Now, these goblin encampments here, they will actually have flax in them that you can pick and then grow yourself. Now, that flax will only grow in the plains biome, but these goblins hit like freaking trains. I want to see if I can just aggro one of them just to show how hard they hit. If we block this, we block 66.9 damage here. They are hard to kill, and they're quite frankly a nightmare. So the goal today is to figure out a way to be able to farm up these goblins and then also farm their encampments without dying. Look how look <laughs> look how much health I lost just from one. And then those goblin berserkers, that's a whole other story. So today, we're going to fix this problem and we're going to make farming the plains easy. Just after I de-aggro a bajillion goblins that will chase you forever. Now, first things first, you're going to need to find a good spot for your base. It's going to need to be relatively close to one of these encampments, but also not so close that you'll aggro them. I really wanted to find one of those pillars close enough to a base uh, to be able to build not only the farming spot around the pillar, but like a house on the pillar. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have one on my... Uh, basically in this plains biome that I found. And I don't want to build a base specifically around that because you might not be lucky and find one near one of these spawn points either. So we're actually just going to build this on the ground. and Maybe we'll build a base up on one of those pillars uh, in the future. So that way we don't get aggroed by these death skeetos. Uh, but basically what we need to do right now is, base is just flatten out an area. Now, what you need to do to flatten these areas out is it is based off of where your feet stand. So if you want to get everything to the level of where your feet are, you basically stand in one spot and then start flattening around you. And that way you'll get a nice flat, like perfectly flat area. So we're just going to kill the goblin that's here. You motherless goat. God, they hit so hard. Ah, you stupid thing. There we go. It doesn't need to be a massive base. It really depends on how much time you want to spend on building a base. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but we'll get into the next part of this once we flatten this out. Now, if you encounter a spot where you're not able to flatten down to where you want to with uh, the hoe, you can actually use your pick and just make sure you're standing at the level that you want to be at and then hit the wall in front of you. And as long as you hit it right in front of you, you'll make a perfectly flat area. So I've leveled out a pretty decently sized area here. I'm actually going to have like a secondary level up here uh, because I didn't want to flatten this all down. So I was like, okay, I'll put stairs and then maybe we'll make the longhouse up here. Uh, so what we need to do now is the farm is going to be down here, but we need to actually make sure that we can be protected here. And that's where this moat is going to come in. Um, because what's going to happen is they will chase you to your base, but then they won't be able to cross this moat or attack your walls, which is going to make this really, really good. Um, so to be able to dig this moat, you just need to dig down. You can dig down literally anywhere in the game. I'll show you exactly how, because we need to actually get everything kind of lined up. So I want to make sure that I go straight that way. So we're going to start digging down right about here. I'm just going to go straight down. And then on the other side of this moat, we're going to actually put down some stone walls. Just to make it look nice. So we'll wall everything with stone. And just dig down. And then once you're down, just go ahead and hit forward. As long as you're standing at the level that you want to dig at, you should be able to keep it at the same level. If you start ramping up a little bit, just back up and then just make sure to re-level everything. You don't have to make it super deep. Uh, but just make it deep enough to where they won't run into it. And we'll enter this one here. And wham bam, thank you ma'am. We just got to make a big old moat. Now you might be wondering, how are you going to get out of your moat? Well, you just need to shift, run, and jump to get out. Which is great. Now, monsters can also do that. But the thing is, they won't actually cross the moat. And then once we have the wall up, we'll be really safe. So we've got it about halfway done. We need to get at the length of what I end up wanting to build here, and then we can move on to the next part. Well, 
This was quite the project just to get it all leveled out. I had to take out that big stone, which was a nightmare. Um, we also aggroed a whole bunch of goblins during this process. We got some in our trench. This needs to be filled up so they stop going inside of the trench. We got to finish taking out that rock wall. Uh, but next, what we need to start doing is actually building all of our nice rock walls around the building here. So we need to get a whole bunch of stone and start doing that. So yeah, basically what we need to do from here is follow our trench and put... I need to put an entrance here too. So I think I'm going to cancel this one. So that way we can jump through that. We'll make it look a little bit prettier, I think than that that's going to be one of our entrances we got to make sure to put a couple of those along this but as long as we put all of these walls through we'll be able to have just a really really nice reinforced base i wonder if we have a slope we don't have a slope we have stairs which i want to put stairs to be able to make this transition better now before we build anymore we got to actually test and make sure all of my plans actually work it's, it's trying it's, you gotta get in here or you're gonna have be on the struggle bus. Yay. We good? Good. I'm gonna drop this stone here. Alright, so I'm gonna go what? lure them in. Are we just gonna stand We've seen here? what happens when Skids does. Well, let me. I wanna be able to jump in. So you guys can get up on the ramparts. I'll lure oh, okay. them in. And then if craziness happens, we might need one person repairing the walls. Okay. But otherwise, we should be good to go. Oh, don't hit me. I'm going to try and aggro as many as I can. Tag's going to be friends. Oh, there's a bug. Skids, Ow. your butt. <laughs> Why is it always my butt? All right, we got big chungus. Stamp and tag conversations always lead to smiles. Thank you both for brightening my day. Natalie, thank you. Ha. I saw you explode. I mean, I killed the bug, but then I fell off. <gasps> there we go. All right. Now they can't hit us. Oh, that's a two-star berserker. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, they're, they're being a little rude because there's so many of us Ooh. in one section. Yeah. All right, so now all we should need to do is just kind of hop up and murder their faces. Except the berserker did stupid berserker I'm, things. I'm going to keep an eye on the walls. But I just, I just missed. Let's not talk about that. It's about that missing you did. <laughs> hey, shush. <laughs> I'm out of stamina. Hey, big chungus oh. berserker. Show us your face. I don't think, have we ever fought a two-star one yet? A berserker? Not yet. It's got so much health. I like that he just derp trapped himself though. So now that they're dead, I'll just go in and pick up all of the items. And then you can literally just sprint run out of it, which is super nice. And pick up all your fancy loots that you so rightfully deserve. Yeah, so there's there's a couple goblins left. Ooh, there's chests here. Yeah. There's a bunch of goblins back there. I'm gonna pick this flax. Because we get two flax per... Oh, there's a mage here. Don't mind me, mage. I'm just stealing your stuff, all right? You be a good boy. Damn, don't die. It's in the chest. <gasps> More flax. Oh, I mean, my God! I wasn't going to touch the chest until we touch ah! all the rest of the things. <laughs> that was barley. Barley's the other item that we can get to be able to cook foods. All right, let's not Oops. get too greedy. I get greedy. <laughs> Stamp! <laughs> what happened? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we did all these things so nobody would ever die. <laughs> About that. Yeah. It's these stupid mages. They light your butt on fire. Die. I'm going to see what kind of goodies they got. Oh, no! Ow. Did you die? No, no I just got cool. hit in the balls by a giant fireball. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, Skeeter. Oh, 
stupid bowlings that light you on fire. There we go. All right, so let's see what we got inside of these chests here. Because we can go inside the house, too. There's some club dudes in there. So we got coins and stuff in there. The barley is what we wanted. There we go. We got more flax. Because I accidentally put it in there. Got them feathers. So the barley and flax we're going to use to make really good foods. And as well as all of our armor. A sharpening stone. A whetstone wheel ready for spinning. Interesting. So that gives us the grinding wheel. Okay, that's pretty sweet. I hear more goblins. Let's see what we got going on over here. There's a whole bunch of gobbies over there. Dark steel. Oh, stupid, stupid bugs. So let's go ahead and get this flax planted. And I don't know what the spacing, how close can they be? Oh, you can plant like a ton of flax in a really small area. I'm assuming it doesn't have like any build requirements, like, or spacing requirements for it to grow fully. I guess we'll find out. Do I need to be like super OCD about how it's placed? <laughs> like perfect flax field? Sounds like such a bad idea. Now that we've got all of our crops growing, uh, we've been working on making the base just a lot prettier. Um, we've got this really cool... So now that we've got all of our crops growing inside of our nice little base here, we've been working on leveling it out, making it pretty, and I want to actually show off one of these cool little tricks here. Uh, Stamp found out that you can hide things like your workbenches and stone cutters and forages, like, in the ground, and then still be able to actually get the radius and be able to build within your base without them taking up room and wearing down like out like under like not under cover or something like that which is really nice so it's a fun little tip uh, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a long house up here and then i think what i want to do here is actually build uh, a workshop area so we'll have all of, all of our forges up here uh, making all of our black iron and everything and we'll kind of make this look really really cool well, I've uh, decided to make the world's most complicated roof structure ever, but it looks kind of cool. So let's go out here and show what we got going on. Um, the roof is looking like that, and we've got these little spiky bits that come out here from the... Uh, I forget what it's called. This bit here, the wood roof cross 26 degrees. And I was thinking of mounting uh, trophies on there, which would look really, really nice. Um, but basically, we used a 45 and then that 2060 uh, diagonal cross, and then another 45 to create these, and then put wood in between, which I think looks good. Uh, then all that's left is to kind of figure out if we want to put more wood on the interior here, or how much wood, because this is really meant to be like a workshop area, um, so we can kind of hide all the things that we built here that I was also putting there for stylization stuff, so... I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to put the wood here or not, but I do like the way it's coming together so far. The complicated part is actually getting this roof going the way I want it to. Uh, so now what I need to do here, if I want to keep it looking the same way, is put a 45, a 45, and then a 26 there, and a 26 here. And then we can snap all of the roofs to that all the way across. Stealing all my stuff? <laughs> What's going on? It did. It stole your tombstone and it's running around with it. Please let it me just see dipped, this. It that just dipped out. <laughs> it's gone. Where, yep. where'd it, it go? It ran back to Stonehenge with your tombstone. No. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the flax to fully grow because I want to be able to make all of the nice new armor. And also waiting on the goblins out there to respawn. We didn't destroy any of their beds, so the goblins should respawn. Uh, but so far, no luck. But we have done a lot of progress here. Working on making the Viking Hall. So I want to make this kind of with like lofted ceilings. And we'll make it look really nice. I'm going to have the big doors here. And we'll have kind of like a lean-to to cover this part and make that look good. And then through here is going to be all of our crafting stuff. I think it's a good spot for that because we can look out. Um, 
I do probably need to make something to get up onto the edge of the root or uh, the wall there, which should be really easy. Uh, but otherwise, things are coming together. Just waiting for our flax to fully grow, and then we can make all of the new black steel armor and weapons. To be able to use all the flax that we're growing, we're going to need to make a couple different things. We're going to need to make the artisan table here, which you unlock when you get the dragon uh, tears from killing motor, which is the fourth boss. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that right there. And then we're also going to need the spinning wheel, which you can make after getting the artisan table. It's fine wood, 10 iron nails, and 5 leather scraps. And that's actually what we're going to have to put our, um, our flax into. So I'm thinking if I kind of put it at an angle here, it should fall out uh, right there. So let's go down here. It kind of looks like it might be done. Well, we've got most of our roof done and the chimney, which is not bad. It's pretty basic. I wanted to make it a lot fancier, but um, sometimes it's just easier to make things, you know, the easy way. But all of our flax is finally grown, which means we can actually make our endgame armor now. So uh, let's pick up all this flax. Uh, important note, you're going to want to save some flax to replant it. Um, so don't use up all of it because you will get two each pick. So you'll be able to basically use half of what you get and then replant the other half. And that way you can have a constant supply of the flax. Um, but let's just go ahead and put this in our little machine back here. I believe we need to put it in the top and it should come out the bottom. So let's see. If we put it in here, we can just fill this bad boy up like that. And now all we got to do is just wait for it to pop out the other side. There we go. Let's pick this up. And now we can make padded cures, padded greaves, and a whole bunch of other weapons. The helmet, ooh, a black metal knife, metal sword, and the, something called a porcupine. Ooh. Wow, so the black metal sword, a thing of death and beauty, does 95 slash damage, block power 10, parry force 20, knockback 40. All it takes is two wood or two fine wood, uh, 20 black metal, and five linen threads, which is not bad at all. Then we've got the black metal knife, 18 slash, 18 pierce, 15 block power. Then we've got the padded helmet, so 26 armor with that. And then we're going to have the rest of the stuff. You got the black metal axe. Obviously, you're going to want to end up making that. Ah, the black metal at gear. 105 pierce. Wow. All right. Definitely going to need to make some of those. Then we got the padded greaves, which is going to give us 26 damage, 20, or 26 armor on both pieces and the negative movement speed. So I was able to craft the whole set. And then I also crafted the black metal sword and maxed it out to the level 4. So it has 113 slash damage, 10 block power, 35 parry force. It's looking pretty good. Now, the only thing we have to do is actually test it out and see just how well it does against these goblins. Pretty sure I heard a goblin over here. There he is. So we've got our sword, but I also made the uh, that pike too. Ooh, that does really good, even with us on fire. Uh, but I also made this. And I think it's going to do a pretty sizable amount of damage. So it doesn't help that my polearm skill is 1 because I haven't used them since like the beginning of the game. Um, oh yeah, the range on that is what's really nice about it. And the stun too. Alright, I love this for goblins. I like that extra range. You can't use a shield with it, which is a bit of a downside I suppose because those things do hit like trucks when they do hit you. Um, but yeah, so the black metal weapons are very good, but the base in general allows you to farm up not only goblins, but these guys too, these loxes, which you're going to want to get for the, like the lox meat pie, as well as a couple other things, um, which gives you 80 health and 80 stamina. It's really good. And all you need to do is just kite them over to your base like you would anything else and then murder them senselessly to get all of their fat loots. So this base really will set you up great in the plains. And you're going to need a base or an area in the plains to grow all of your flax and stuff. So uh, really easy to make. You can make it as big or as small as you want and it works really well. Uh, but I do hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next one.